Hi guys, Simon Drizellian here, another voice of reason. Um, and it looks like peace is breaking out all over. And we were looking at this to see how the election was going to impact uh, world events that I've been talking about for some while. Um, and today I, I want to concentrate on Gaza. And this is one of the, I think, one of the big reasons um, uh, that Trump actually won, because people could see that there was going to be some big change. Now, again, it's all about joining the dots. Okay, so one of the, the first call that was made to Donald Trump as soon as he, he won was from Netanyahu. Now, whether Trump called Netanyahu or whether Netanyahu called Trump, that doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is, is probably the content of that call. It wasn't a congratulatory call. Uh, I think it was a warning call uh, from uh, Trump to Netanyahu to say, okay, you got to get this, you got to get this done. I've made a campaign promise now that we're going to stop all of these wars day one, and you're part of that. Okay, so Gaza, Lebanon, we've got to stop this, otherwise we're going to have a regional war with Iran. So I think the content of the call um, was to get your act together in Gaza, get out of Lebanon, secure Israel so that we don't have to go to war. So this is what I think is going to happen. I think that Netanyahu is going to draw down the military conflict in Gaza. They've already decimated Hamas. They've got a little bit more to do uh, and I think that that will happen. So they've destroyed the tunnels. Um, they destroyed the military infrastructure of Hamas, but it's left a lot of displaced people, a lot of casualties, no infrastructure. And the only way that that infrastructure is ever going to be built is with Israel saying yes and employing the, um, the aid um, of Europe. That's how it's going to work. So I think what will likely happen is that Israel will demand security and therefore they will stay on as overseers on the, on the basis of counterterrorism. Okay? Um, it won't be an occupying force. I think that would be a misstep. I think what they what they would need to do is to recruit a locally um, a locally recruited military a military police um, to uh, to utilise. Um, Israel's Im current in infrastructure of security uh, to police the, the Gazan people. I think that they will then do a massive security fence um, with uh, heightened surveillance to make sure that no further terrorism comes into Israel. That will secure Israel's needs. What I think will happen at that stage is that all the money that has been given to to Gaza, which is it's something in the region of like $80 million a month, okay, but that aid has been turned into weapons and to military infrastructure. And that's why Hamas are all billionaires. Okay, so that we know where the money's gone. It hasn't gone to the Gazan people. Can you imagine how many hospitals, how many schools, you know, you and port facilities? It doesn't even have a port facility in it. It's on, it's on the Mediterranean. And that's because Hamas has never seen the value in doing things for its people. I think what will happen, and, and Biden started this by trying to create a, a, a temporary port, which unfortunately washed away. Um, I think that um, Trump will build a major port uh, in Gaza. And that's where all the um, freight and uh, aid will come through. And then they will start building up Gaza and uh, it will be overseen set very much like the Marshall Plan of building Germany after the war. I think this is what's going to happen because Gaza is massive real estate. Can you imagine beautiful beaches on the Mediterranean? That should be a paradise, an absolute paradise instead of it being you know, a rat hole. Can you imagine that it had like 30 major hotels? Can you imagine that a Hyatt there, a Hilton, people would be flocking to go to there to stay on beautiful beaches overlooking the Mediterranean if it was safe. That would give so many jobs to the Gazan people, you know, jobs in hospitality, uh, jobs in construction, jobs in infrastructure, you know, port facilities. I mean, it goes on, it goes on. It would have its own airport. Um, so you, you could literally employ every Gazan to do that, create this jewel in the Middle East. It will give something to be proud of for the Palestinian people. And 
people that are abundant, both in their mind and in their wallets, don't create terrorism. Okay, terrorism is created by poverty, and and I think that if Trump could actually do this, you would see peace largely in the Middle East. Because guess what? All the rest of the Middle East countries are going to go. You know what? We'd probably be better off in a peaceful existence and bring in money, you know, from tourism and things like this. Imagine that Iraq opening up Iraq with all of the Sumerian, Mesopotamian uh, treasures that they have there. It'd be wonderful. I would love to go there. And then, so Lebanon, you know, Hezbollah is largely gone. And, and I think um, that is gonna be an interesting conundrum over the next six months of how they actually do everything. Israel is gonna want a, a secure border, and, and why wouldn't they? That can only come through a buffer zone. Now, the military, the, the UN military have been there since 1974, done nothing. They're, they're meant to stop Hezbollah building up military um, threatening Israel. That was the whole point of, of putting the UN troops in there. And all they've done is just sucked up the corruption. Um, and Hezbollah have put the, the, the heavy word on them. Now, now there is no Hezbollah. So I think um, Israel will do a clearing uh, thing in the, in the Middle East there. Um, and then once they do that, there will be a standard withdrawal. Um, and then the UN will, will be pressured to do their job which they have not done if they can do that and hezbollah is no more i think lebanon then um there'll be a big push by the druze and the christian uh, militias then to um, to restore balance in in lebanon and once lebanon sees that gaza is being built up uh, i think at that stage lebanon is going to go well we used to be that we used to be the paris of the middle east you know let's do this again you know, let's bring in you know, foreign money, let's bring in tourism, let's bring in, you know, Lebanon is one of the most beautiful places in the world, it's people are some of the most beautiful, I mean, it's always been said that Lebanese women are the most beautiful women in the world, you know, and right now, you know, the, the, the place is just a shadow, a dark shadow of, of what it was and what it can be. So that's the first part of the peace process, obviously, uh, we've got China to talk about and we've got... Uh, uh, Iran to talk about and I'll do that in another video but right now I feel confident that the Palestinian people and the Gazans um, will see a better life over the next uh, probably one to two years. This is Simon Gisellian, a voice of reason out to you.